This is the perfect kind of terrain for tabletop RPGs, and you can make it. It's really not hard, and it doesn't require anything special. Hey guys, welcome back to Black Magic Craft. This week's episode is again sponsored by my good friends at Loot Studios. Their theme for this month is the Mad Mages Experiments. I decided to take inspiration from them and come up with a really versatile and usable bit of terrain. And I made these modular tower tiles. I think they could technically be classified as tiles. They allow for really immersive gameplay. They don't have walls obstructing any views. They clearly indicate that it's a tower. You can put minis on the stairs for marching order and for close tight combat sort of scenarios. You can make as many of them as you want, stack them as high as you want. They're designed to keep going and going and going. So you could really get crazy with them if you wanted. And you can make each layer with a different floor style. So if you want to have one with stone or one with wood, you can do that. You can make a variety of different styles for ultimate versatility. The best part is you can make them with foam core, a knife, hot glue gun, and uh, a nail file. That's really it. You don't need any fancy tools or supplies to get this project done. And to make it even easier, I've made a template for the cutout that you can download for free to help you make your own. The first thing you'll need to do is download and print the template. I've put it up on DriveThruRPG and there will be a link in the video description where you can grab it. It's pay what you want, meaning you can grab it for free by entering zero dollars or you can use it to give the channel a one-time donation in any amount you choose. You want to glue the paper to something more durable that will hold up to multiple uses. Something like thin chipboard of a cereal box is perfect. Then you just want to cut out the inner area. Take note of the tiny little arrow on the step. This is your overlap point and you want to make a small notch there on your template. The final version of the template that you're going to download will have this more clearly marked than the prototype that I used while filming. You can then use the template to draw out your shapes on your foam core. Now, technically, you could use any type of foam core foam or even cardboard for this, but it's going to work best if you use foam core with the paper removed. So I suggest using the ReadyBoard brand from Dollar Tree with the Easy Peel paper if you can get your hands on it. On my first sheet, I traced out six layers. But I realized after that, that if I was more careful with layout, I could actually get eight out of one piece of foam core. In total, to get the two layers that I built for my tower, I only used three sheets of foam core, making this a really efficient project as far as material is concerned. This project does have a few very tedious steps, the first being cutting out all the layers of foam. So put on your favorite podcast or TV show or whatever and get comfortable as you cut out a bunch of these. All right, I have a whole bunch of these cut out now and you can start to see how this little system is gonna function. How many do I need to cut out? That answer depends on how tall you want this to be. The nature of this shape is that it will just continually spiraling upward for as tall as you wanna make it. In theory, you could make this from your floor to your ceiling and run a really wicked staircase encounter. I'm not that kind of crazy. I opted to make 22 layers. Now 24 layers would make an entire 360, but I actually don't want it overlapping the bottom one just because I don't think I want to be reaching in and under to place minis. One cool thing that you can do with this system is decide to not attach these all together, but pick a interval of pieces and attach those together and make these little modular sets that you could stack up and you know have a partial one, a tall one, whatever. However high you want that to be, I'm gonna go with two of these being set aside as top layers, basically attach these in two chunks so I can have a half one and a full one. And the reason I wanted easy peel paper for this 
And the reason that I'm gonna peel the paper off all the layers is because of this side here. I want this to end up looking like stonework and I'm gonna use basically the same idea that I did on one of my very first videos, the pillar one where I came up with that idea of cutting little notches into the sides of foam core to make really quick stonework pattern. I'm gonna do the same thing here and having these paper edges just does not really work for that. Using the nail file, I cut in the grout lines for the brickwork. To keep things consistently sized, but also efficient, I used the width of the nail file to give me my brick width. This way I could quickly lay out the spacing. You could use a knife to cut these grooves and a pencil to widen them, but two or three quick passes with a nail file is gonna be far more efficient. Again, this is tedious, but it's certainly not hard. Next, take a ball of aluminum foil or a jagged rock to add some stone texture to the foam. You wanna get both sides of the step portion and it doesn't hurt to texture a little bit of the surface around the edges that might protrude between layers. When you cut all of these out, you, you likely won't get them perfect. There's gonna be some variance in your circles and that's not only okay, it's actually good as it will help give some depth to your layers of brick, but it might mean that the top edges are sticking out and you wanna have some texture on them. Remember that little notch that I mentioned earlier? You wanna mark that spot really clearly before assembly. When I cut my pieces out, I did a tiny little cut with my knife there, and before assembly, I marked it even more clearly with a pencil. This way, when you get to gluing your layers together, you know exactly where to line them up. A note on the brick spacing. Initially, I thought if I started my first line on the same spot on every layer that they would end up being offset as the layers of the stairs rotated. It turned out that my rotation in relation to my size of brick meant that they all would line up in the exact same spot, which you don't want, you want an offset. This is gonna vary depending on how wide you make your brick pattern. Regardless, it's useful to be mindful of this and offset your starting points intentionally as you're doing your space. Facing. When gluing each layer, pay special attention to the overlap of the stairs and make sure those layers are attached really well. After some time, you're going to get your sections fully assembled. If you have some ugly protrusions on the stairs, it's no problem as you can now just carefully slice off the extra material on the outside of the stairs. Just cut it all flush. This is why I didn't add any of those grout lines to the edges of the stairs before assembly. With the assembly complete, I then went in and drew in all the grout lines on the face and sides of the stairs using the more traditional sharp pencil method. And if you find that stacking your sections together is a little bit wobbly, it might be because the bottom of your piece, the foam area is a bit domed. If this is the case, just push it in with your fingers, make a little bit of an indentation so that they stack nice and flat. For the top floor areas, I suggest making each one different so you have a variety of styles to choose from. For both of mine, I continued the pattern of the brick wall on the outside, but then made a different pattern on the floor. One of them, I went with a really wild stone slab pattern, something you might see in a mad mage's tower. Because these areas are so small, there's no reason to go with any sort of implied one inch grid, even if you tend to play with them. For the other layer, I went with a traditional plank wood flooring. For the main plank lines, I just lightly cut them with an X-Acto and followed that cut with a pencil to bevel the edges. And for the wood grain, I opted for an exaggerated wood grain with a pencil, rather than the wire brush technique that I sometimes use. This allowed me to run the grain in different patterns and directions and all stay within that brick border. While the wire brush method is more appropriate for this scale, I really do love the illustrative look of hand-drawn wood grain on certain pieces. And while the assembly of these makes them pretty sturdy, the weak point is the top step. So you might opt for adding a little bit of wood bracing here. I simply carved up some wood dowels to look like timber, I punched in a hole into the tower using a pencil and glued the wood in place. I opted to do these on every third step so that the top didn't look alone and weird by itself. This is a project where the coating of Mod Podge is gonna be pretty important. I used a damp brush so that the Mod Podge and black paint really flowed into all the cracks. This step not only hardens the foam on the outer areas, it also helps bond all the layers together, making the overall piece more solid. With all the layers and cracks though, it's hard to get the Mod Podge into every little crevice. So I like to mix up a little bit of really, really diluted plain black craft paint. This is gonna get in and hide all those little white spots peeking out. This extra coat of black paint also provides a nice flat starting point for painting. 
Before I get into the paint, I want to take a minute to discuss the sponsor of this video. My friends at Loot Studios create highly detailed and inspiring miniatures for you to print at home on your 3D printer. It's a monthly service that you can join for only 15 bucks a month. And with your subscription, you get access each month to a large set of themed miniatures. Each month is a different theme. They've done goblins, undead, and this month the theme is Experiments of the Mad Mage. Perfect for D&D. Each month you get a ton of miniature files. You'll get a set of heroes, stylized bases, and a whole bunch of monsters and villains. Plus, there's always a big set of additional scatter terrain and decorative elements. All the models come pre-supported so you can drop them into your slicing software and get beautiful prints quickly and easily without any of the guesswork. The coolest thing about Loot is that they provide the files in both 32mm gaming scale and 75mm scale for diorama and decorative painting. So the scatter bits can be used as game props or to help you build really emotive scenes in your dioramas. It's all up to you. Each month there's a ton of cool sculpts to print and play with. I really like this month's theme and decided to print the main villain model as well as several bits to decorate his laboratory. They all printed out beautifully and were a pleasure to paint. These bits will look great on the game table and are rich in detail. If you want to get your hands on this cool set for this month, be sure to join up before the month is over. I'll put a link in the video description where you can check it out and join. I wanted to keep this build super approachable, so I didn't use an airbrush or any specialty paints on them, just simple acrylic craft paints. This paint job does not need to be complicated and it's something you can tackle at your kitchen table. For all of the stonework, I simply built up layers of grays and beiges using a cheap makeup brush to dry brush on the paint. You could do this in three simple steps of dark, medium, and light gray, or you could do it in several layers with different tones and mixes of colors. If you want the stonework to look a little bit more realistic, it's a good idea to mix in some beiges or brown tones to the grays to warm up the colors and add a bit of tonal variety. Just load up your brush with paint, remove as much as you can on a paper towel, and lightly apply it across your piece. With each layer, you want to put on less and less. So when you get to your brightest, almost white layer, you want to be very light-handed and only hit the highest points. If you've got a non-stone floor on any of your layers, you'll need to come in after and paint those out separately. And for painting out wood, I just use a golden brown as the base coat and let the wash do the rest. Personally, I like my pieces to look a little bit more grimy, so I like to apply a wash or two. On these, I just used my homemade washes. These are simple to make, and I have a video on the recipe you can check out. I didn't go with just a black wash though. Instead, I used a mixture of black and brown wash, which I randomly dribbled on the pieces and mixed together with a brush as I spread them out on the surface. I think this looks a lot nicer than just using one or the other, and it doesn't take any extra effort to do. Whenever you apply a wash, it will darken the whole piece. You might find that you want to get back some of those highlights that the dry brushing gave you. In this case, you can always go back with a light gray or beige and carefully bring back some of those details. Be careful not to overdo this though. It's easy to be too heavy handed at this step. Just be cautious and take your time. Less is definitely better here. And that's it. These are complete. I'm really happy with this project and I think it's going to find a home at a lot of people's game tables. You can get a lot of mileage out of these. As you saw, they're very simple and cheap to build. You don't need LED lights or magnets, you don't need complicated designs or fancy tools. Just some foam core, some glue, some paint, and well, you have an immersive and practical terrain piece for your tabletop RPGs. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like and let me know in the comments. If you want to pick up some tools or supplies for your own hobby and want to support the channel in the process, head over to blackmagiccraft.ca. There I have my essential equipment page where I list all of the most important tools and supplies that I use in my arsenal so that you can be sure you're grabbing the right things. It's an excellent resource for people just starting out. And if you really get a lot of value out of these videos that I make, consider supporting the channel on Patreon. It's through that support that I'm able to produce these videos each and every week. And of course, don't forget that template. Link is in the video description. Cheers. See you guys next week.